Tonight, live from the Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino, Tachi Palace Fights returns for another exciting night of MMA action. Dave Huckaba versus Laron Wilson. Chris Gomez versus Bubba Jenkins. And in our co-main event for the TPF featherweight title, Micah Miller versus Georgie Karahanian. And in our main event, Cody Gibson battles Casey Olsen. These fights, plus many, many more. For these fighters, the ultimate goal is to be a champion. The training, the blood, sweat, and tears for a shot at the next level of competition. Tonight, some take that next step and some go down in defeat. But in this cage, it's about how you get back up. It's about returning to see another day, another challenge, and their second coming. Tachi Palace Fights 12 presents Second Coming. Hey everybody, we are live here at the Tachi Palace Fights 12 Second Coming. I am TJ DeSantis along with UFC featherweight Javier Showtime Vasquez and the mastermind Jordan Breen tonight. Seven fights on the card live here on Sherdog.com. We appreciate you joining us. A main event tonight between Casey Olson and Cody Gibson. An exciting little entertaining fight to see whether or not Cody Gibson get over the hump. Last time in December at Tachi, very, very impressive against Ulysses Gomez. He came in as a considerable underdog against Gomez. Far more experienced, former 125-pound champion here at Tachi Palace. And for the first two rounds, was dominant. Looked great. Showed off newly improved stand-up. Looked physically strong. And the third round, couldn't keep up with Ulysses Gomez. Got tired. Got submitted. But against Casey Olsen, someone that's been inactive for basically two years, and facing someone who's a strong wrestler, but maybe doesn't have the kind of submission prowess of Ulysses Gomez, a very interesting test for Cody Gibson, someone who's still young, physically developing, but really rounding out his mixed martial arts game and becoming an interesting bantamweight on the regional level. And Casey Olsen is a former wrestler at Fresno State. By day, he's somewhat of a Rich Franklin. He is a uh, teacher, and tonight he is the hometown favorite. Javi, you're a guy that has fought in other people's hometowns. You've you fought in front of big crowds where you're the favorite. Talk about the pressure of fighting in front of a, a, a core group of people that have basically come to see you dominate and win. Well, for me, I always like to go into the other guy's territory. It puts a lot less pressure on me. Plus, I like getting booed, so that always helps. But uh, yeah, it depends. Some guys thrive on fighting in front of their home crowd. Some guys feel the pressure and, uh, you know, have a difficult time with it. We were scheduled for eight fights tonight if you we're paying attention. I said we only have seven fights tonight. The co-main event between Micah Miller and featherweight champion here, Georgie Karahani, has been nixed. Tell everyone what's going on with uh, the Millennium product. Well, unfortunately, it's a really, really sour situation because it's rare that we get to see a title defended at Tattoo Palace. I mean, yeah. Richard Goodman and Jeremy Lucia, I'll tell you, what we're good at is promoting good local talent. And when they start winning fights, when they win our belt, it's bigger and better things almost immediately. That's what winning a Tattoo title normally means. So to actually have Ger Georgie Karahania come back and to face a fighter who nearly realized his UFC dream, Micah Miller not making the cut in the last season of The Ultimate Fighter, incidentally, Tough 14 starting this evening in a weird way, the second coming was indicative of what Micah Miller was able to do too, because this is his second time at Tachi, having previously beat former champion at the Jesus and didn't make weight. He didn't get the title. Right. So it's a terrible situation all around. It's terrible that Georgie Karahanian, after making weight, said, woke up this morning, woke up apparently at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and said he felt terrible, had food poisoning, ended up in urgent care in the hospital today, getting IV bags, trying to get rehydrated, but not being going to be able to go. Micah Miller left twisting in the wind. Unfortunate because both guys might have been a win away from a, a bigger fight deal. And for Micah Miller, maybe even more harrowing knowing what went on at Tachi last time he was out here. Something that he felt was like a squandered opportunity, the real misstep of his career. It's interesting because Micah Miller credits food poisoning to his lackluster performance on the Ultimate Fighter. Food poisoning strikes Micah Miller again, this time not getting a fight with his opponent, Georgie Karhanian, who suffers from food poisoning. Javi, it, it's interesting when you come to a different area, um, especially here in Lemoore, uh, the Whole Foods, the, the food that some of these fighters are used to, it's pretty long jaunt to go and, and get that stuff. Micah Miller was able to eat um, what he wanted to, and he stays away from the food poisoning. Georgie Karhanian, he ate locally and, and maybe maybe ingested something that he's not used to. It's disappointing. When you come to an area like this, would you suggest that these fighters bring a duffel bag of food? To Ab you know, absolutely. You, you have to feel and you have to eat what is comfortable to you. Um, you got to remember, 
you're, it's not just fighting one night. It's six, eight, 10, 12 weeks of preparation. And it comes down to what you're putting in your body the day before the fight and the day of the fight. Such a crucial and a lot of times overlooked um, issue that fighters tend to forget. And, and if unprepared, could cost you a fight, could cost you a win, could cost you UFC contracts, could cost you your pay, could cost you everything. So yeah, definitely it's, it's, it's a terrible situation. And, and you know, I feel terrible for, for, for Georgie because I know he trains hard. He's a, he's a great athlete, he's a great fighter and uh, really just a, a horrible roll of the dice. A ton of fantastic things besides what we were supposed to see tonight in the Komen event. We see the return of Bubba Jenkins, his second coming here to Tachi, his second mixed martial arts fight. What do you expect to see from the 2011 National Wrestling Champion tonight? Well, hopefully we get to see more because in his first fight against Josh Williams, we really didn't get to see a whole lot. Apart from a little back mount defense as Bubba Jenkins got a little frisky early, got a big slam and ended up having to escape. Other than that, that fight was a takedown, a guard pass, ground and pound from back mount and a tap out. I think it'll be interesting to see if we get to see any of the stand-up that Bubba Jenkins has procured so far against Chris Gomez. And I also think it'd be interesting to see if he finishes a power double leg and ends up on top, I'd like to see him just set up, pass guard, get a dominant position. I'd like to see if what happened against Josh Williams is, is that Bubba Jenkins style right. or is that just something he was able to do mm -hmm. against an opponent that he was a vastly better athlete than? Now we're gonna see Bubba Jenkins get some more cage time, Javier. Uh, along with the fighter, you are a coach. You train guys in mixed martial arts, and obviously you're one of the best uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts in the country. What would you like to see from Bubba Jenkins? We talk about that wrestling background. Should he try to get away from the wrestling and maybe try to work his hands, or still, it's it's he's only a second fight. Should he still kind of come in and, and try to get that takedown and, and, and do work on the floor? Well, um, it, it all depends. It all depends on how his training camp was was set up. Um, yeah, you would little by little you would like to see his stand up progress. Not taking any unnecessary chances because he always has the wrestling uh, ace up his sleeve. Go out there, possibly throw some strikes, do some combinations, feel out the fight standing. And uh, you know, if he's having success, like I said, he's always got the takedown in his back pocket and develop the fights one fight at a time. It's extremely important with such a prospect like Bubba Jenkins to pick the right opponents, to fight the right way, to get the right mat time. It does nobody any good, including himself, to go out there, take the guy down and submit or, and try and pound him out. Um, you know, because certain opponents are picked for specific reasons. It's, it's always good to get some mad time out there, get at least one, two rounds in, and then potentially try to end the fight. Bubba Jenkins is an interesting guy as well, because unlike most converted wrestlers who say, you know, the striking's the difficult part for me, I know that's what I'm going to have to work on, get better at. Bubba Jenkins comes right out and flat says, I've been fighting guys my entire life. I've been throwing punches my entire life. I gotta learn this jujitsu stuff. I gotta learn how to submit guys. So unlike a lot of wrestlers who come into the game with a mentality where it's, I've grappled my whole life, I gotta learn striking. Bubba Jenkins' mentality is more, I've been fighting my whole life, I gotta learn how to tap guys out. Now, when it comes to wrestlers, obviously, they're going to pick up the the submission grappling a little bit easier than other guys who have a little grappling. I, I, I would assume, Javi, it's, it's easy for a wrestler to learn mixed martial arts than maybe a striker to learn mixed martial arts because they're already familiar with one of the hardest parts of MMA uh, with the grappling. You know, um, everybody's different. You know, years and years ago, uh, I spoke with Dwayne Ludwig, who, who's, a, who's a good friend of mine, and he told me, he goes, man, I've been getting punched my whole life. It's just a matter of learning the grappling a little bit, learning a few submissions. They're not afraid of getting hit. Right. And it's the same thing. If, if you're a wrestler, man, you might be petrified of getting hit, and you might be, feel comfortable grappling. So it's kind of the mindset of the fighter. So it could go either way. A striker can go, man, I'm not afraid of getting hit. I just got to learn this ground stuff. Yep. Whereas a wrestler goes, I'm not afraid to wrestle. I'm just afraid of getting hit. We you see know? this more and more in mixed martial arts, too. For years, we thought of wrestlers in the way we thought of Mark Kerr and Mark Coleman and Randy Couture. You're big, you're strong. Maybe you do it from the clinch. Maybe you do it with a power double. Maybe you're a great scrambler. But if you're a wrestler, you're going to have to learn how to take guys down, beat them up, maybe submit them, and stop the striking part of it. Whereas now, we see more and more wrestlers. Johnny Hendricks won two national titles, but when he came in mixed martial arts, he wanted to learn how to throw big left hands and hurt people. And then you see what he's able to do against a guy like John Fitch. So I think more and more great athletes who get mixed martial arts, guys like Bubba Jenkins, we're really kind of re-sculpting what we think about wrestlers in MMA. It's just not, oh, this guy's going to have to learn striking. Some of these guys relish the striking now and love it, and it might be actually a different part of the game entirely that's their stumbling block or their hurdle to clear. Well, we that, that well that too, you know, like I said, it kind of depends on the individual. And, and, you know, as MMA training has evolved, 
guys started to figure out, hey, no, use your wrestling to keep it standing and develop your stand-up. Whereas back in the day, you'd say, we got the wrestling. Let's just take the guy down yeah. and ground and pound. So it's an evolution of not only the athletes, but the training for the fights as well. That, that's that been the big uh, and change. And there's an evolution even in just Bubba Jenkins because Bubba Jenkins wasn't recruited in a usual way. Right. Ricardo Laborio from American Top Team went, you know, we got a lot of great guys in American Top Team, but we want to have the next champion. So he actively sought out NCAA wrestlers, Abu Dhabi guys, and really wanted to find the next big thing. When they signed Bubba Jenkins, that's their intent. He's a bit of a pet project for Ricardo Laborio, a guy who's trained great mixed martial artists for well over a decade now. Yeah, we will see the next step for Bubba uh, Jenkins' uh, career moving forward tonight, but we're also going to see some two veterans who have fought mixed martial arts for a long time compete against one another. And I'm going to turn it to you, Javier, because you fought one of them in Robert Emerson and you trained with another one in Savant Young. What's going to happen in this catchweight contest tonight? Wow. I, I mean, this is one of those things. I, I honestly think, I, like I said, I, train, I fought Robert Emerson, but I've also trained with Robert Emerson. And I've also trained with Savant Young. And I, two very, very evenly matched guys. They're both good on the ground. They're both very good defensively on the ground. They both, uh, Robert Emerson is extremely difficult to take down. Um, Savant Young. Young, very well-rounded, good takedowns, very difficult to take down. Both guys very difficult to, to submit, but it's a striking. I, I expect this fight to be a striking fight. Uh, uh, Savant Young, um, a little bit more of a trickier kind of a stand-up artist, whereas um, Robert Emerson, hard-nosed, basic, um, fundamental. Well conditioned huh? Fundamental. V very fundamental, and... Um, Savant is a little bit trickier, a little bit flashier, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, very interesting style matchup. We saw Savant last time out against Robert Washington struggle a little bit, but he was able to capture that guillotine. Do you see Rob Emerson be maybe possibly? Does he have to look out for that guillotine? Well, he has to look out for it because that's what Savant Young's really, really good at. I mean, we joked when we had the Robert Washington fight that he had to look out for the guillotine, no matter what happened. That's exactly how it yeah. finished. Savant Young choked out Kendall Grove with that guillotine in Absolutely. about a minute. And Kendall Grove's about 10 times his size. He has an incredible <laughs> squeeze and just a great knack for setting it up. So I think Emerson absolutely has to be careful. But Javi mentioned the fundamentals. That's a big thing for, for Rob Emerson. If he can jab, leg kick, stay outside, he should have a pretty cool night. We'll see how aggressive he is. But the jab, the leg kick should be very, very formative for the Saints. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of good stuff tonight. If you're just joining us again, Micah Miller and Georgie Carhani and off tonight due to uh, some food-specified illness on the side of Georgie Carhani. And, but definitely a lot of good stuff tonight. We've been down the card uh, a little bit. We're going to see Alex Perez and, and Edgar Garcia in a, in, a, in, a, in a rematch from the last time. Um, talk about that because, uh, you know, this was this was actually the last fight. I mean, it was the first fight in the car we, we called last time. Yeah, right? Alex Perez and Edgar Diaz went out, yep. and it was a guillotine in just about a minute. And because it was kind of unfulfilling in that way, I think they just kind of wanted to do over. You know, when two guys meet up, uh, especially if they're, they're local guys, we see so much of it at Tachi. There's uh, a great blend of fights that are clearly intended for the local crowd, mm -hmm. whether or not they're prospect, but also a great blend of the guys that we, we so covet going to the next level. But in a fight like this, I think a lot of people come up for local stars and they don't get to see them compete the way they want. Right. And it kind of feels like they got sold short. Yeah, from top to bottom, a solid fight tonight. Uh, appreciate you joining us on, on SureDog.com.